perhaps why he loved Nigeria so much. Always prayed for this nation. I am very sorry, I, Pastor Taiwo could speak Hausa language. In case Absolutely. many of you didn't know, Absolutely. he was very fluent in the Hausa language. Absolutely. In 1981, he obtained a degree in petroleum engineering um, from prestigious University of Ibadan. That's popularly known as UI or your state, um, southwest Nigeria. It was at UI that he met with Jesus Christ and also met his first wife of blessed memory, Pastor Bimbo Dukoya. Petroleum engineering. Of course. He, he could have been, you know, anything exactly. else. Exactly. I mean, you many... have to be brilliant to have been an engineer. I mean, with the educational system at that time. Of course. And so to have him as a petroleum engineer, you know how brilliant he was. Yes. And while after his graduation from the University of Ibadan, he, in 1981, he gained employment with the pet, with the um, as a, a petroleum engineer at the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation (NNPC) after his um, compulsory national youth service. And ten years into that service, Pastor Taiwo actually got a call to go into ministry. And so, together with his wife, then wife, Pastor Bimbo Dukoya. They were sent forth by their then pastor, Bishop Michael Konkwa of the Redeemed Christian Evangelical Mission, TREM, to go forth and propagate the gospel and, you know, increase the kingdom of God. And there they founded the Fountain of Life Church. This was in 1992. And I can imagine how, um, how whether that was an easy or a difficult move for him. I mean, especially I now with NNPC at that time, even at this time, Ibarra, when you get a job with NNPC, there is the look you have. People feel like you have arrived and you have made mm. it. And to be called into ministry when you are already, you know, working in such a prestigious organization as it were, and to hit that call, you know, that's why t today we all say thank you, Pastor Taiwo. Thank you, Pastor Taiwo, you know, for, for, for obeying God. For it. I mean, most of us have, are beneficiaries of, of that ob obedience to that call. Yes, because not many people, I know there are some ministers who actually still do ministry and their corporate uh, white-collar jobs side by side. But in 1994, Pastor Taiwo took what well, actually um, voluntarily retired from the NNPC to go into full-time ministry. And so it was there that Pastor Taiwo went full-time and started this ministry, the Fountain of Life Church, as we know it, himself and his beloved wife then, Pastor Bimbo Udukoya. And we know Pastor Taiwo loved God passionately. He did. Yes, and it showed in his worship and ministration. He was a man who stood immovable, immovable on the word of God. He was also very what passionate life, about right? impacting lives positively, which is, of course, the hallmark of true Christianity. Absolutely. If you didn't learn anything from Pastor Taiwo, and I'm sure we've learned a lot of things, one thing you must learn is how to love God. Truly. Of course. Um, mm. You learn how to love God through the, through the trying times. You learn how to love God through the times of victory. Mm. You learn mm. that from him because it's not just enough. He doesn't preach it. He lives it. And so we're all able to pick okay. that from him, okay. not from words, you know, but from his actions. Okay. And, you know, you, when you come to Fountain, you realize that we're a, a, just a group of people who just love God. Of course. And we love to worship. We love to worship. And, and that's our call yes. um, in Fountain. But let's talk to you. Let's tell you about, you know, the, the, the marriage, his marriage and family. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Taiwo was not um, just a pastor. He was also a husband and a father. Mm -hmm. um, his marriage to Pastor Bimbo Dukoya um, in 1984 was blessed with three children, uh, Pastor Tolu Dukoya Ijogun, Pastor Jimmy Dukoya, and Pastor Toby Dukoya. Um, Noha. Noha. And sadly, in December 2005, um, Pastor Bimbo died in an ill-fated plane crash. Yes. But five years later, after his first wife died, Pastor Taiwo found love again, this time in Faraway, UK, where he met and later married his wife, Pastor Nomti Odukoya, also of blessed memory. Pastor Nomti hailed from South Africa. Their union was blessed with additional two sons. Let's tell you about them, because I always, one of the ways that I, I have described Pastor Taiwo through all of this is the man who did great things of course. silently. Yes. He never bragged, he never talked about the things he was doing, but thousands of people were benefited from his ministry, um, directly and indirectly. And, mm -hmm. and let's just tell you some of the things, you know, that Pastor Taiwo did. Yes. Uh, Pastor Taiwo ensured both members of the Fountain of Life Church and non-members benefited from the gift of the ministry um, assigned to him by God. Pastor Tawa established various outreaches that is still impacting the lives of many um, within the Lukbeju community. Now, some of the outreaches are the Hope Center. Uh, the Hope Center is, is uh, the aim of that Hope Center is to meet the needs of the less privileged in the areas of good, uh, food and clothing, 
as well as career counseling. Um, there is also the Great Springs Rehabilitation Home, which perhaps, you know, over the, over the course of this um, season, we've had a lot of people come out to testify, yes. to testify about this. a lot of young boys. Uh, absolutely, and that's an NGO aimed at taking young children um, off the streets, street. yes. which is very rare in a place like Lagos because you have a lot of young children on in the streets, and then rehabilitate and reconcile them with their families and society. Yes, and we also, another outreach that Pastor Taiwo actually looked into was education, and he established the Education Support Project to intervene in the failing standard of education in schools situated here in Ilupeju, Lagos, Nigeria. And some of the key achievements this project actually include impacting the lives of 10,000 students, purchasing over 10 million naira worth of equipment and classroom furniture, refurbishing and completely modernizing the science laboratories of Ilukweju Grammar School. He also offered scholarships to students to study in various government-owned universities and polytechnics. And of course, these students became graduates. And he went ahead to give awards to teachers and principals of these schools. And when you hear some of these testimonies, you will be in shock. Some of them all the way from primary school, through to secondary, through to university, and then, you know, even assisting in terms of getting jobs. They have mentors to, you know, to assist them. They have a place to sleep. Yes. It, it's just something that a lot of people will put camera to. You know, once they do it, it's on TV. Of course. I will never mention the word. And it reminds me of the scripture that says, when your right hand is doing something, do not let your left hand know about it. And this was Pastor Taiwo's mantra. Whenever he did something for anyone or for any community or any particular project, Pastor Taiwo never made noise about it. He allowed, the Bible says that, let men see your good works, that they may glorify your Father in heaven. And people saw these good works. Pastor Taiwo didn't tell them to see it. They saw it. And this is why today, after God has called his general home today, we have so many people here to testify and to speak to the good man, to the general of God, Pastor Taiwo Daniel Odukoya, of the life he lived, how he impacted people, individuals, organizations, people in the Fountain of Life Church and outside of the Fountain of Life Church. He did impact them and many will be here. We cannot exhaust the life and times of Pastor Taiwo here, just standing here. That is why we are gathered here. And so you'll be here to hear people say their own experiences, share their own experiences about their, ex about their meeting, their relationship with God's general, Pastor Daniel Taiwo Udukoya. And so who passed away actually on the Monday? Yes, he passed away on Monday, August 7, 2023. And so without much ado, we will be taking you back into the live service in a moment. As you can see, the hall is practically getting filled up. We'll have lots of dignitaries that will be here. So, Precious? Absolutely. Um, and I'm sure, you know, you will, you will hear a lot about the general tonight. And what you're going to hear tonight is even a tip of the iceberg, you know, compared to if we were all to put our experiences together, um, it will be a whole book. But just stay tuned with the service. This is the first night. Tomorrow again, um, we'll have the service of songs at 11 p.m. But pay attention um, to the things that have been said tonight. And you know, the big question is, what will you exactly. be remembered for? Exactly. What will you be remembered for? For me, it is all about living a fruitful and impactful life here on earth. That is one thing I'm going to take home from this tribute. And even before now, we need to live a life of impact. That is my take home from this night of tribute. When I am called home, when you are called home, what will people have to say about you? What will God have to say about you? Will people be ready to gather for you to say good things, wonderful things about you? Will men see your good works and gather together when you are gone and glorify your Father in heaven? That is the question to think about. And you know, one of the final question to think about is, you know, what one of the pastors said. He said, you know, one of, one of the services, he said, Pastor Taiwo never had any agenda, any other agenda. His, own, his only agenda was Christ. And you know, as Christians, that should be our only agenda, you know, Christ. And I hope that you ponder on that, on that tonight as we, you know, go into the live service of the Night of Tributes for Pastor Taiwo Dukoya. I am Precious Amayu. And I am Iboro Tonya Edet. Have a blessed night.
Yahweh We bow down And worship Yahweh We bow down And worship Yahweh
officially commencing the service of songs for our dearly beloved Pastor Daniel Taiwo Dukoya. And um, if you are outside, please come in. Uh, we realize that there are a number of our friends here uh, who have come to pay their last respect to our dear pastor. Uh, just a few announcements before we start. Um, I'm facing the main exit. There are exits to my right and to my left. And um, there are exits on each floor. Uh, if you need to use the restrooms, there are restrooms on the second floor and the upper deck. Uh, ladies to my left and um, men's restroom to my right. Finally, if you're a minister, uh, please signify to one of the ushers so that they can seat you appropriately. If you require any further information, you could please ask the ushers. We would have the opening prayer, Pastor Rutimi. Thank you, sir. 
Praise the Lord. Let's rise up in prayers, please. Our most high God, you have instructed us that your will in Christ Jesus is that we give thanks in everything, in every circumstance. And so, Heavenly Father, we are here to celebrate the life of your servant, our father, Pastor Taiwo Odukoya. We know you've come ahead of us. We know you are here. And we hand over the service to you. Every aspect of it. Come, Heavenly Father, teach us. Come and lead us. We ask, Heavenly Father, that at the end of the service, you and you alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. While we remain standing, we'll take the um, first hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, be led by the choir, the Grace Levites.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Grace Levites. Good evening, fathers of faith here present, bishops, pastors, church leaders, leaders in governments, a friend from all over the friends from all over the world, both here and online, our members of the press, and the great members of the Fountain of Life Church. Uh, on behalf of the Odukoya family and the Fountain of Life Church family, uh, we welcome you to the service of songs in honor of our departed Pastor Daniel Taiwo Dukoya. Thank you for being with us at this very difficult time. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6.10 says, Our hearts ache, but we always have joy. Hallelujah. Amen. I would like to call to the stage for the first Bible reading, Pastor Toby Enua. Please, let's make our welcome. Good evening, church. The first Bible reading is from Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8, New King James Version. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate a time for war, and a time of peace. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Toby. We will be taking a number of tributes at this service from friends and family. Uh, we know that Pastor Taiwo made an indelible mark in the lives of all of us here, which is why we're here. Unfortunately, because of time, not everyone would be able to testify here today. We have seen the various testimonies on social media, which really warms our hearts. Thank you for sharing. All those giving tributes to please limit it to the time allotted to them. Some are three minutes, some are five minutes. Uh, we need to keep to time. Uh, and as a result, after the time allotted to you, the mic would fade. Of his own accord. Um, so the first set of testimonies I'm going to be calling are ministries in the Fountain of Life Church that pastors set up and um, the, I would call on stage uh, Mr. Balogun representing Discovery for Men and Pastor Lara Adesoya for Discovery for Women. Uh, the Discovery program uh, was what God used uh, to talk to individually both men and women discovering their purposes on earth. Can we have Mr. Balogun and Pastor Lara Adesoya on stage? Both of you, please. Please 
Please come up. All right, sir. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. I'm giving um, this, um, this tribute on behalf of uh, discovery for men. And I'm going to read. Tribute to our Father in the Lord, the President of discovery for men. What cannot sufficiently express the sense of loss and grief in our hearts, particularly when we realize we will no, not see you again in this room. Hearing that your gentle but power-filled words of encouragement to we, the directors, and the entire discovery for men at large. We, however, take solace in the fact that you have joined the cloud of witnesses in heaven, having run your race with perseverance and focus on Jesus alone. You are a committed and loyal general in the army of God. You were humble to a fault. We, the directors, testify of your sincere of, of your sincere we testify of your sincere <clears throat> pardon me. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> we the directors testify of your sincere and genuine love of Christ through your disposition to us. The church, the discovery for men ministry, and to humanity in general, you showed perseverance and stood unrepresented for Christ in the race, in the face of huge challenges and the storm of life. We will continue to be grateful to God for the exemplary life you lived, a life worthy of emulation by every believer. Your perspective on life and the manner in which you approach issues diffuse the fragrance of Christ to everyone that you cross paths with. We rejoice in the, in, in the fact that you have fulfilled your assignment on hurt and it pleases God to take you home. We are committed to continue the vision of discovery for men by God's grace through spreading the true word of God to all men in which you stood for and propagated for over 30 years. We are at peace, knowing fully well that you are resting in the bosom of our Lord, where there is no pain and sorrow. Rest in perfect peace of our Lord, your sons in the Lord, discovery for men, director. Thank you. Hallelujah. Good evening, church. Please, if you are a woman in this auditorium, and you've ever been to Discovery for Women, can you please stand while I read this tribute on behalf of Discovery for Women? Thank you. Today we stand representing thousands of women from all over the globe that have been blessed by this great ministry, Discovery for Women. A ministry founded 25 years ago, presided and established by our president and visionary, Pastor Daniel Taiwo Odukoya. An uncommon man 
completely secure in himself and blessed with a special understanding, wisdom and body to see women rise up to the fullness of their potentials in the home, in business, in politics and in the economy. The vision was for every woman, young and old, rich and poor, light and dark, single and married, separated and divorced, saved and unsaved. He believed. He believed. He believed we are God's creation, created unto good works, which God before has ordained. And through the hands of this man, Homes were built, marriages were restored, souls were saved, leaders were raised, and God was glorified. Oh, thank you, sir, for giving to the Lord. Thank you for restoring a generation and raising another generation. Today, we salute you, you, our president, and pledge our support for this ministry. Today, we arise as women with tears in our eyes. We arise with pain in our hearts. We arise somewhat perplexed. We arise, but with absolute confidence that the glory of the latter will be greater than the former. We arise. We take our different positions, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith and taking a day at a time we arise with the new leadership that has been prepared anchored on his word as you taught us led by his spirit as you reminded us and walking in the grace and favor that was bestowed on you and you have passed on to us adieu our president our general we will make you proud we will surely change our world. Yes, we will make you proud and we will change our world. I'm created to reign. I'm created to change my world. I am created to be. I'm created. Hallelujah. You have just seen an example of what pastor raised. You know, I hear it everywhere that fountain has strong women. And the reason is this. He raised the men to go and teach the women what they need to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. He raised the men to give their wise platforms. Hallelujah. And at the end of the day, we were all raised. Let's appreciate our pastor. Honestly, I want us to appreciate our pastor. That was a good man. General raising generals. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Amen. Uh, the last group I will call are the um, Oshudi boys. Where are you? Please, quickly, make sure you run here, please. Uh, these were boys that were taken from under the Oshudi bridge. Uh, one of Pastor's vision. Pastor used to say, we will get to them before they get to us. And he raised many of them. Many of them have gone to universities. They are married. They are working. It's amazing. Do they look like Oshodi boys? God is amazing. Good morning, church. <clears throat> 
20 years ago, I was under the bridge of Oshodi, wandering around without no vision, without no mission. And yet, Pastor Taiwo de Koya sent the mission department to take me from the bridge. And I was taken to a Grace Spring home where I was given, taken to good schools, primary schools, secondary schools, universities. And today, I'm a graduate of University of Adwe Kiti. <coughs> Married with two kids and I'm supposed to be a, region, a departmental regional manager of Fuku Nigeria Limited today. Thank you. Good evening, church. My name is Babatunde Shegun. I was one of the boys that was speaking under the bridge of Oshodi. I'm doing conductor, carrying career, and uh, smoking in their head. Thank God for Pastor Tawo, who sent mission department to us. They took us to Great Spring Grove for rehabilitation. They sent us to school. Now I'm a graduate of accounting from Washington State University. I'm a principal of a school, and I'm blessed with children. Praise the Lord, church. Good evening, church. My name is Lawa Samwa. 20 years ago, I was one of the guys picked under the bridge. I was into different vices, into Indian, and doing conductor. But with the help of Pastor Taiwo, through the help of the mission department, we are picked under the bridge, put in a home, sent to school. I'm a graduate of economics in Unilag. I am happily married with lovely children, and I'm working with Nigerian beauty. Thank you. Good evening, church. By virtue of nomenclature, I am Oola Biola Lekon Samuel. Um, I'm one of the boys picked under the bridge of Oshodi. Um, I was doing conductor and kaya then. Then through the help of the missions department and Pastor Taiwo Dukoya, um, we are able to be sent to school. And today, I am a proprietor of a secondary school and a primary school in Ibadan. Thank you very much. We here we represent 56 area boys that was picked from Oshodi 20 years ago. We are area boys that was into drugs, that was into kaya, conductor, and the likes. Before we were picked by the mission department as a director by Pastor Taiwo Otokoya. <coughs> and we we're taken to Grace Spring's home. We we're put in a very good private schools. In fact, we were given good treatment in Ikorodu. We ate good food that we could never, our parents could not even afford, if at all we were at home. Yes. We were given good treatment, and then we were given mentors, the likes of Pastor Biodun Balogun, Brother Biodun Balogun, Brother Biodun Awoshika, Mrs. Subugiwa Anna, and the likes. And then, <clears throat> through the vision of Pastor Taiwo Dukoya, today many of us are graduates of universities, of private, of polytechnics. Several of us are married. Some of us are in, working in reputable organizations. He is a school owner of a primary and secondary school. And today, if not for Pastor Taiwo Dukoya, I will not be standing before you as a departmental regional manager of Food Co Nigeria Limited today. So today, I am I'm a produce of your investment 20 years ago. Thank you, Fountain of Life Church. Thank you, Pastor Taiwo Dukoya. God bless you. We are grateful. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Tayo. Thank you, Church. Praise the Lord. There is a reason. Wow. There are some, some more of them there. Let's just appreciate them. All the way from Oshodi. Amen. Thank God for the legacy that he left. And we are proud of it. And in the name of Jesus, it will continue. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. Right about now, we will take a short biography. Um, it's a video on video of Pastor Taiwo Odukoya. Please.
on June 15, 1956, in Kaduna, Northern Nigeria. It pleased the Lord in His infinite wisdom and foreknowledge to give a gift of two children to the family of the Odukoyas. The first, a boy, was named Taiwo, and the second, a girl, was named Kendi. No one knew then what a tremendous impact the quick and adventurous little boy named Daniel Taiwo Odukoya would make in the world. His father was a deacon in the Baptist Church and his mother a women's leader in the Women's Missionary Union. They brought up their children with a strict spiritual discipline. Every morning at 5 a.m. they had devotion during which they would worship, pray, read and meditate a memory verse from the Bible. This would form the foundation of that unshakable faith in which Pastor Taiwo would lead his life and impact the lives of multitudes around the world. He had his primary and secondary education at Baptist Primary School, Kaduna, and St. Paul's College, Zaria, where he would represent Kaduna State in sports before proceeding to the University of Ibadan where he obtained a degree in petroleum engineering in 1981. It was at this university he met with his future wife, Abimbola Bimbo Udukoya, Nee Williams. As he grew up and matured into a man, he discovered that he had a burning desire to help others and found great pleasure when he brought relief to those in suffering. He did not recognize this at the time as a divine calling. He just acknowledged it as an overriding passion, ruling his life. Upon graduation as a petroleum engineer, he started work at the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, in April 1982, after the compulsory one-year national youth service, and sat on different policy drafting committees at the corporation, where he was involved in crafting some key policies that are still in use in the Nigerian petroleum industry today before he finally voluntarily retired in 1994. Specifically, he served as Secretary of the Accreage Allocation Committee under the chairmanship of the Honorable Minister of Petroleum Resources, Professor Jubril Aminu, between 1990 and 1993. While still at NNPC, at some point, Pastor Taiwo heard the call to go into ministry and in 1992, after he was formally released, and sent forth with his wife of blessed memory, Abimbola, by the presiding bishop of the redeemed evangelical mission, Trem. He founded the Fountain of Life Church with a membership of less than 20 at inception. Today, the church is one of the most influential Pentecostal denominations in the country and has nurtured and released cause of local assemblies across the country and has missions in the United Kingdom United States of America and Equatorial Guinea, in addition to parishes in different parts of Lagos. At the core of the ministry has been Pastor Taiwo's driving passion, the undiluted message of the gospel, salvation and the word and the works of faith, to bring help and succor to a lost generation, to clothe the naked, to feed the hungry, to give shelter to the destitute and in any way and by any means demonstrate the love of Christ to the world. A prolific and accomplished author with hundreds of publications including books, articles and seminar papers, his books unleash your God-given potential, home affairs, the proof, glorious legacy, the life and times of Bimbo Udukoya. Women will change the world. Time where has it gone and reclaiming the Nigerian dream have gained a wide readership both locally and internationally. Through these activities and his passionate preaching and ministration of the Word of God, accompanied by life-changing miracles and testimonies, Pastor Taiwo became a father and an inspiration to all, young and old, male and female from all nations, nurturing, mentoring and supporting scholars of thriving ministries, ministers and individuals who willingly surrendered to his mentorship. He became a beacon of hope, a shining light for all to look up to, and a living example of the gospel of Christ whom he served.
Pastor Taiwo found love twice. First, through his 21-year marriage to Pastor Bimbo Udukoya until she went to be with the Lord in December 2005. And five years later, through his marriage to Pastor Nomti Udukoya, who went to be with the Lord in November 2021. Although Pastor Taiwo was blessed with five biological children and six biological grandchildren, his spiritual children are numbered in their tens of thousands and are to be found on every continent of the earth. To each life he touched, he showed the way to Christ, to whom he ascribed all the grace given to him for the work of his ministry. To his congregation, Pastor Taiwo was the down-to-earth friend with the heavenly anointing. He was the counselor, the patient listener, dispensing wise and godly counsel, speaking the truth in and out of season. He was the man so transparent that you could see his soul shine through his words. To his biological children and grandchildren, he was the loving and protective father who was never too busy to sit and talk, bond and play with them, to help them with their schoolwork and to teach them the lessons of life along the way. He was their friend who never forced his passionate Christianity upon them, but made it inevitable for them to know his God by being a perfect example of a Christian. To them, he was like a father and a mother all rolled into one, because he was as caring and affectionate as a mother, and yet as strong and protective as a father. To his sibling, the one who would always share all that he had with everyone, the one who gave to all who asked of him, a rock and support, and a man from whose presence he could never depart without receiving a blessing. To his church and personal staff, he was the boss who adopted them as his own children. He was the man with boundless energy, the master who worked harder than his servants. And now that Pastor Taiwo has gone to be with his dear father, whom he loved and worshipped with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his mind, we are left with no greater testimony of his enduring legacy than that every memory of Pastor Taiwo is pleasant, bringing a smile to the face and a feeling of joy to the heart. For now, only in his absence have we come to know experientially the meaning of the scripture that says the memory of the righteous is blessed. We shall certainly meet him again to part no more. Every child of Pastor Taiwo, can you celebrate him this evening? Every child, every child that is here, every child, every child, we celebrate our daddy. You may please be seated. If you're a member of this church, one thing you will learn is how to worship. If you didn't know how to, just watch Pastor Taiwo, Lost in Worship. One of the things he taught us to do was to worship. Ladies and gentlemen, for the next few minutes, I will invite Petisin Okopi to lead us in worship. Let's make him welcome. Hallelujah. Is the Lord good? Is the Lord still good? Is the Lord still good? I remember the last time I came here, Daddy was teaching us how to live by the Spirit. And right now, He's smiling to us as a Spirit. And I want to say that the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. And the Lord is with us. Salutations to every man of God. And I know he loved one song so much. You know that song? Le 
lift your hands where you are. Oh, 
Come on, give him your best tonight. Oji kon lu kokpa okpa kon o kon ye o Ibarare o we cannot see it did not consume us so oh, you are faithful Lord, Lord. for the battles we can see and the battles we cannot see oh, it did not consume us so Oloruto lu farawu pa Usubarem Come on soak in your worship Usubarem For all the times that you showed up for us Hey, for all the times that you stood up for us,
Lord, we bow before you. Indeed, you are our rock of ages. You are our king, immortal God, invisible, the only wise God. We celebrate you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. One other thing you would learn in this church, if you're a member of this church, you will learn a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You know, this is our year of the Holy Spirit. And it's so amazing that it's in this year, Pastor passed. He handed us over to the Holy Spirit. Even though he's, he's not here, the Holy Spirit is not missing. We thank God. Hallelujah. I'd like to call Bolaji Akiyemi, representing heads of departments, the Fountain of Life Church. Let's make him welcome. Choir, please begin to come up stage for your next song. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Bolaji Akinyemi, and I'm here representing all the past and serving heads of department and heads of fellowships that I've had the privilege of serving under Pastor Taiwo Dukoya. In Acts in chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible tells us of the things that Jesus both began to do and to teach. Pastor Taiwo's life was that of a teacher. And it was not just as a teacher by word, but it was as a teacher by deed. His life could be compared of to that of Apostle Paul when he said, follow me as I follow the Christ. And I say it without any doubt in my mind. If you follow, if you, are, if you are a follower of Pastor Taiwo, it's one way to heaven. No doubt in my mind. One of the things that I found most intriguing about Pastor was the fact that he had foresight, unusual foresight. He had the ability to to see into the future. That's how I, how, I mean, how I pick it. I got appointed as the head of department six months after I got saved. Six months. If I'm a pastor, I won't do that. I mean, I don't know what he saw in me. Six months. And I'm grateful to God that I did not disappoint or give him any reason to regret. And I'm sure many of us that served under him as heads of department, present and past, we have similar testimonies. We look at ourselves at the time he called us, we probably were not qualified. In fact, it's not a case of probably, we were not qualified. But we thank God we grew up into the shoes that he put us into. Access to him was also something that we never lacked. Anytime we had to meet with him to discuss concerning the assignments he gave to us, somehow those discussions always went beyond the boundaries of the assignment. And I dare to say that pastor, he really related with us as a pastor. He related with us more as a father who happened by chance to be our pastor. He was a, a father, 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 father indeed. And for that, we appreciate him. One of the other attributes that cannot be questioned about him was his meekness. 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 One of the dictionary definitions of meekness is power with control. Power with control. Moses was referred to as a very meek man above all the men on the face of the earth. When you consider that Moses had you know, a one-on-one, face-to-face relationship with, with God our Father. And you know, more or less, the power of God was available at his disposal. The way he carried himself, he wore his authority very lightly. And that was the same thing with Pastor Taiwo. I mean, I remember situations where when things happened, <laughs> I expected him to bring out a sledgehammer. Well, no, don't worry. To just, you know, he just had this way of managing situations. And the people involved would turn out better. I mean, I can give my own example, but that's, not, that's a, a story for another day. Now, that meekness also manifested itself in humility. I remember in the earlier days of Fountain, after service, pastor would stand, you know, just in front of the podium 
and you would say, ah, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, ma. To people who are younger than him. Not just younger, people he could father physically. And a lot of us took on those streets. I knew personally I did. And it opened doors for me. Doors where I never imagined. Humility. We learned a lot of things from him. Pastors was an exemplary life. One which always had something to learn. Without doubt, he has made us all better people. And that's why the loss is such a heartache. We love you, Pastor. But our assurance and our conviction is that you are in a better place. Rest in peace, Pastor Taiwo. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Bolaji, for those beautiful and lovely words. Pastor was a good man. Um, I'd like to call somebody who was quite close to Pastor. And I know this could be difficult. God will help. I'd like to call Sheon Lewis. Sheon worked with Pastor as Pastor's executive assistant for many, many years. I want us to appreciate Sheon. Good evening, everyone. I'm giving this tribute on behalf of every Fountain of Life Church staff. I've titled the tributes <laughs> CEO Extraordinary. Almost everyone knew Pastor Taiwo as a pastor and related with him as such. But some of us had the privilege of working with him in various pastors. I am one of those who related with him, not only as my pastor and father, but also as my CEO. When I started working with him officially on the 14th of February 2005, 2006, apologies, I didn't know it would be a lifelong journey, but that is exactly what it has turned out to be. It was not only my boss, it was also my leader, my mentor, my teacher, my encourager and guide. And that is is what it was to practically everyone who had the privilege of working with him. He was a rare gentleman. He was real. He cared genuinely. He was studious. He was dogged with the things of the kingdom. He was sensitive to the Holy Spirit. So his every word and step were at his instance. He was quick to forgive people's misgivings and foolishness. He was daring. So venturing into new things was the norm for him. He was excellence-minded and discolored every day in the office, irrespective of the project being handled. Working with him taught us all how to walk with our Heavenly Father. He mirrored Christ always. He taught us how to study and stand on the efficacy of the Word of God. He taught us how to depend on the Holy Spirit for literally everything, even things as little as replying a mail or responding to a casual question. I quickly became a member of the family because he was not just interested in me getting the work done. 
it was much more interested in my life as an individual and how to overcome every limit. I couldn't have asked for or had a better pause these past 18 years. Dad, as I fondly called him, it's unbelievable that this your journey on this side of eternity ended so soon. And I believe all who had the privilege of working with you will miss you in a very special way. For me in particular, the phone won't ring again. With instructions or what to do, you will not be there to rebuke or correct me when my excesses want to get in the way, want to get the better of me. You will not be here to encourage me to stand tall, whatever, whatever may come my way. But be assured that that the things I've learned from you and saw in you will be put to good use even in your accents. You lived well. You lived well. You died empty. And I promise, and I believe every staff of the Fountain of Life Church will ensure that your legacy continues to trail the place. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sheung. For that very touching message. You know, it was as if Pastor knew everything. Whatever you took to him, he knew. Remember, he would teach us how to study the Bible with um, concordance, the number, how to check it. It was Pastor that said, walk in the spirit and you will reduce your errors. Hallelujah. Pastor would continue to love you. Um, it's time for the choir. Second hymn.
Hallelujah. Today is indeed a celebration of the extraordinary life of Pastor Taiwo Daniel Idukoye. All these hymns are a compilation of his favorites, and you can see through his soul and his heart through the songs he loved. We're not going to watch a short video, The Fountain of Life Church Biography, and indeed the story of the Fountain of Life Church is a story of the man the Lord called and picked from his choice stable. A man walking his assignment and bringing God's pleasure to this side of humanity. The biography of the Fountain of Life Church. They found a venue at the Lupe Jew Recreation Center and the church started on Wednesday the 15th of April 1992 and was dedicated by Bishop Michael Konkwo after he had blessed and released Pastor Taiwo and Bimbo Dukoya from the Redeemed Evangelical Mission, Tram. From inception, the church was designed as a family worship center, upholding only godly tenets with values of integrity, commitment, compassion, excellence, teamwork, efficiency, and hard work. All these were anchored on the overriding mandate of evangelism. From those little beginnings, like wise master builders, the church founded and established numerous institutions as instruments of intervention to reverse the course of suffering and negativity in people's lives. Grace Springs Rehabilitation Home, the Hope Center, the Grace Springs Medical Center, now Nidus Aquila Hospital. The Education Support Project The Water Project Discovery for Men Discovery for Women The church has grown from strength to strength, making disciples of all, spreading the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, bringing soccer to those in pain, and establishing the will of God on earth. And I'm going to have a Bible reading by Mrs. Bola Kujere. Good evening, church. Second Bible reading will be taken from the book of Isaiah. 
chapter 40, from verses 28 to 31. It says, have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even to the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. We're now going to our next set of tributes, and I'll please call Dr. Ade Udunaike, who's representing St. Paul's College, Pastor's former school. Let's encourage him as he comes, Dr. Ade Udunaike. Thank you so much, um, the Fountain of Life Church. My name is Ade Ogunaike. Behind me are these young men. <laughs> who had the opportunity to be classmates to Pastor Taiwo Dukoya. Well over 50 years and running. The school is St. Paul's College, Wusa Sazaria. And for 50, going on 55 years, uh, we've been together. I would uh, make bold to say that was a school that birthed a lot of the dreams that you see today. We thank God for that privilege that we had to share the space with Pastor Taiwo. I just have a few words to say. A lot has been said and still will be said. Death leaves a heartache so hard to heal, but love leaves a memory so hard to steal. Psalm 48 reminds us that this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. We've come here this day for a number of reasons. We're here today to pay tribute and our respect to a man of God, our brother, our friend, our classmate, Pastor Tai Wodukoya. Not only have people from this congregation and community gathered, but many ministers have come, ministers who have respected Pastor Taiwo as a minister and have loved him as a friend. We are also here today to show our love and our support for his precious family. Not only have we sensed our own personal feelings of loss over his passing, but our hearts have been drawn toward them and will continue to be with them. Finally. We are here today to seek and to receive comfort. We will be less than honest if we said that our hearts have not ached over this situation of his passing, but we are not too proud to acknowledge that we have come here today trusting that God will minister to our hearts and give us strength as we continue our walk in faith with him. It is our human nature to want to understand everything now but we trust, we require that we lean and rely heavily on God 
when things seem to be unclear. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. Tears are a safety valve that God built into us to help us at times like this. It's okay to cry. I'm not going to tell you today that you'll never have questions come to you, but I'll tell you this. There's something wonderful that you can focus on or choose to focus on the things you know, things the word of God declares. We declare with Job, who said, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. So when we think of Pastor Taiwo, his contributions to the nation, Nigeria, specifically to men and women of this church, and particularly to us, his classmates, what he contributed, what he invested, we have so much to be thankful to God for. Consider the investments of love and devotion that he made even in his marriage. Consider the investments of godliness and nurturing that he made into the lives of his children and his grandchildren. Consider the investments of the word of God that he made into the lives of so many people, not only members of this church, but all of the people, including ministers that he poured his life into. Let me say again, the measure of a life is not only in its duration, it is also in the quality that goes with it. Later, when all the words have been spoken, when all the songs have been sung, we will stand to commit the body of our dear friend and classmate to the keeping of this earth until the coming of the Lord. And we will commit his soul into the loving hands of God, the Lord that he served, bringing an end to the final chapter of this earthly life. But it will not be the end of his story because the memory of his life and the influence of his life remains. Psalm 73 tells us that my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. To the children, Jimmy, Tolu, Toby, Jomi Loju, Timmy Lane, I say be comforted. Your dad has completed his God-given assignment and handed over the baton to you. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. To the church, there is a God-given responsibility we have to run the race from where Pastor Tai was stopped. The Lord, the enabler, will open up insights and grant us grace and wisdom to continue in his stead in the name of Jesus. Good night, Pastor Taiwo. Rest in the bosom of the Lord forever. Thank you very much. Just one. Usually, when we go out to meetings like this, we just like to remind ourselves of the school song that we sing. I'm sure it's a song that all of you know. That school is an Anglican school raised up till when we left in a Christian manner. So I just ask the, the keyboardists to help us. I do not trust these voices that you see here now. But with that support, I believe that we can sing at least the first stanza of Christ is our cornerstone. That is a school anthem. is a cornerstone on him alone we build with his truth in salon the gods of heaven are filled on his grave Oh, sweet.
very much, sirs. Thank you very much. I now call Dr. Bola Adewara from First Baptist Church, Kaduna. That was the church Pastor Tai grew up in. Dr. Bola Adewara. Let's encourage him as he comes, please. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord, church. Um, I come here with a very heavy heart because seated there a minute ago, a friend that I just spoke with about three hours ago, I had just passed on. I spoke with him when I was coming here. I had he just slumped and he's going to be with the Lord. I feel so but to God be the glory. I hope I can say what I want to say again. Uh, in 19, now, if you are a member of uh, First Baptist Church, Kaduna, if you pass through this church between 19, in the 60s and the 70s and in the 80s, please, can you be upstanding? Thank you. Thank you. I am sure many of us, we are just saying ourselves for the first time. Uh, this testimony I want to give is our testimony. Sometime in 1976, I was still in the primary school and uh, in the first Baptist church, Kaduna, that we attended then, there was a program called Student Day. Do you all remember? I remember I was in primary school and during Student Day, the, each student will introduce him or herself. You will mention the school you attended. You will say, I am Tunde Bolanta uh, Baptist College, Jaws. And a man stood up and said, I am Daniel Taiwo Odukoya, University of Ibadan. Being in primary school, I was challenged. University of Ibadan, I spotted the man. After the program, I went to meet him. I want to attend the University of Ibadan. He said, where are you now? I said, I am still in primary school. Baptist, Baptist Kigo Road. The same school he attended. And then he said, look, after your primary school, you will go to secondary school, and then you will go to the university. It was a tall order. Fast forward to about 10 years ago, I met him somewhere and I told him that do you remember the person who came to you? He said, oh, are you the one? I said, yes. He said, do you eventually go to Ibadan? I said, no. I went to a better and a bigger university. <laughs> he said, what university is that? You know it. University of Ife. <laughs> university of Ife, now christened OAU. Do you know the meaning of OAU? Oba Awo University. <laughs> and that was when we started talking. And Pastor Taiwo had a unique talent of remembering. He started asking me questions. Where is this person? Where is this deacon? You know all the deacons. I know the Odukoyas in the church. We know all of them. Thank God my elder sister is there. Auntie Fonlayo. Married to one of the Odukoyas there. These are people who raised us. Thank you so much for being a good example. Bola is also there. One of my contemporary, one of the, I think the last one of the family, we know all of them, the Odukoya family. Great family. People who made Christianity very great there. Now, we went on that way and he was always asking me, where is this? Do you know where the children are? And that was what led to what we call a Lufbak, alumni of First Baptist Church, Kaduna. This is an alumni, the first of its kind anywhere in the world. Can you imagine people who went through a church in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s? We sought for ourselves and then we gathered on WhatsApp. And I asked Pastor Taiwo, what do we do when we come together? He said to give back to the church that made us. He said to give back to the church that made us. And since that time, all of us have been there. 
we've been discussing. We found so many people, almost about 90 of us now, from all over the world. Some in Canada, some in America, some in Australia, some in Nigeria here. All of us. Sometimes we see them. I'm just seeing Auntie Funlayo after about 50 years, I'm sure. The Lord be with you, Auntie. Sorry about this loss. But we give glory to God because Pastor Taiwo assisted us to come together again. There are many of them who you say, this man, where is this? And then he told me stories that, oh, this person, oh, he had challenge with the accommodation and I went there, we did this thing job for him. He will ask me, what are you doing with yourself? I publish eLife magazine. He will call me, how far with your magazine? He is a sower, a man who loved things. He said, how far with your eLife magazine? He will give me adverts. There are many things like that. I never knew he would not come back. A few months ago, I was with him at home. And I said, Pastor Taiwo, you will need to speak on mentoring masterclass to the younger generation. And he said, when I come back, he did not come back. He has gone to be with the Lord. Pastor Taiwo, wherever you are today, may the Lord bless you. Yeah. Pastor Taiwo, wherever you are today, may the Lord bless you. Yeah. Fountain of life, you will not die. I was here when Papa came to preach the first Sunday here. And the biggest prayer you were making that day was, Fountain of Life will not die. I repeat, Fountain of Life will not die. So many churches, when their founders pass on, the church will come down. You will not come down. By the authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fountain of Life, you will leave. I love the choir. I love what you are doing here. Please show the example that when the founder passes on, the church can move on and the church will be stronger Amen. and stronger Amen. and stronger Amen. in the mighty name of the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Thank you very First much. First Baptist sir. Church, God be with you, sir. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Sir. Papa, God be with you, Hallelujah. sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. We'll now be ministered to by the Grace Levites. Glory, hallelujah to the name of our loving Father. We bless you, Jesus.
Pastor Taiwo was a man that loved him so much that in this house we just practically can't function without hymns. In describing Pastor Taiwo, there's no way you can describe him and separate him from his worship. We're not going to watch a video, Pastor Taiwo, a man of worship. Let all the other names fade away. Oh, let all the other names fade away. Till there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your You can do a little bit better than that. I think we can still do a little bit better. Let us give it up for the Lord. Let us worship the Lord with our praise. Let us worship the Lord with our applause. Let us worship the Lord with our praise. I think we can still do a little bit better. Let us put our hands together for the Lord this evening. This is what Pastor Taiwo would have wanted us to do. Praise, 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 praise. Fountain of life track, praise, praise, praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. We're going into another round of tributes. But I must warn this next set of tribute uh, givers that we're running behind time. We're already about 30 minutes behind our schedule. The mic that they said will fade off didn't fade off. Now I will pull you. Hallelujah. But instead of pulling you, I want you to know that our grandfather in the Lord, Bishop, has a role to play. He's waiting. Our brother and reverend from Day Star is also waiting. So as you give your tributes, know that you are keeping them Waiting. Hallelujah. I think that would help us a bit. I'm going to call on behalf of the Fountain of Life pastors, Pastor Blessing Awushika, to give a 
tribute for three minutes. Help me time how. Hallelujah. Master King is on his own. So I shall not come up. So you can't see my face. Amen. Good evening, Daddy and Mommy. And good evening to all the ministers in the house and everyone that is here. I'd like to invite every fountain that serves under Pastor Taiwo Dukoya anywhere in the world to be upstanding. You know, it's, um, it's difficult to talk about a man that is so simple, so open, so easy to read. Because everybody is going to say the same thing because pastor is a consistent man. He's not fake. He doesn't have different faces for different situations. He's one and the same person and you can trust that whoever you know pastor to be, that's exactly who he is. But I'm representing my colleagues who are pastors that serve under him. And I'm going to read some words that I try to put together to describe him, you know, quickly, because I want to give some context to the words. Pastor Taiwo is humble to a fault. We all know that. He's a man of the highest integrity. You'd wonder how he teaches people integrity is this house. It's not by teaching it. It's by being it. And he taught us that there's no compromise when it comes to that. <laughs> Pastor Ben Akabweze wrote a tribute. And in, in his tribute, he said he served when he was chief executive of a financial institution in his daytime calling. One of his members, one of his staff was a member of our church and somehow had fraudulently made some money and they tracked it and they found part of it was money that he gave as offering in the church. And he, being a pastor as well, called Pastor Taiwo. We all know many records of incidences and said to Pastor, this is what happened with this gentleman. These are the facts. Pastor will say, eh? What did we do as a church? Every dime of the offering that came from that guy was returned to that institution. That's the fountain of life church. But more than that, that's the pastor that is called Pastor Daniel Taiwo Dukoya. And therefore, he taught every man who served under him. If you want to serve God, you can only serve him with integrity. Sincere. He was sincere in everything. He was an open book. He was a simple man. Pastor, in trying to encourage every young tailor in church, he wore every jacket, whether perfect or imperfect. Ankara, Adire, everything. He just wanted to make sure people were prospering, that felt good, that they dressed pastor up. And we would laugh, but he was okay. That was just our pastor. He was the most respectful. Someone already demonstrated it for you. You have to bow quickly before pastor bows for you because he was just in his nature. Our pastor was a kingdom builder, not an estate builder. He was not interested in building Taiwo Dukoya estates. No. All he wanted to do was to build the kingdom of God and nothing more. When I think of Pastor Taiwo and I think of uh, the song, Take the Stage, Lord, Have Your Way, I'm Just a Vessel, Nothing More. That's who he was. He was nothing more than a vessel. All he wanted to do was to leave and let God take the glory for his life. So in his pain and in his joy, he gave everything back to Jesus, never keeping anything for himself. The day Pastor Bimbo passed and they came to give him the message, Pastor Taiwo Dukoya, as they told him, he sat, took, went from the edge of the seat where he was sitting, on his knees on the floor, bowed his head, started worshipping God. He was crying, but he was worshipping his God. We, we could only keep him away from the Thursday showers after. The Sunday immediately after, he insisted he was going to church. Why? He said the people need to be encouraged. He is the one who lost his wife. We, the people, are the one he was worried about. Ha, ha, ha. You're wondering who our pastor was? He was contented in himself. Total contentment. Had no inordinate ambition. We'll never, we were sure that our offering and all our tithes were safe in this house. And they were used for all those kind of works 
that you saw. Oh, show the boys. Um, we had a kitchen where anybody can go and eat. We were doing one million and one things trying to change the lives of other people. Because Pastor Daniel Taiwo Dukoya was not trying to build a kingdom. In fact, when they built him a house, it was because the church said, okay, you're going to be 50. You will own your own house. Because he was not going to touch anybody's money. But yet he was ready to die serving the same people that he was called to. That's our pastor. He was totally non-materialistic. Same thing as what I've told you. Caring for others. That was pastor's second day job. I don't know how many testimonies we have of what he did. Now, what I want you to note is that everything he was doing was in teaching us how to pastor. He showed us by example, not by words. He called, he will always tell us that he was called to raise leaders. You know, when people used to think when Pastor Bimbo died, that Fountain would die, they didn't understand Pastor Taiwo. Pastor was called to raise leaders. Pastor Bimbo Dukaya was the first fruit of his ministry. And thereafter, he raised a million and one fruit. If you are a fruit of Pastor Taiwo's ministry, I want your hand up. We're unashamed, we're proud of the man who gave his life to raise us. We're proud of the man who taught us what we know. Most of us never thought about ministry. I'm being honest. Me, I'm a Muslim girl that had no plan for anything to do with all of this. But just from going to the fellowship that they were having before starting the church, one day pastor walked in and said, you, the Lord said you will head the business fellowship. I'm looking at the man, head which business fellowship in the church that has not even started. But did I not head that business fellowship for many years? Did I not gain from it and did my business not get built up because I was serving in a ministry that was called to that? Like someone said, he was a seer. He always saw the future before we could see it. And for each and every one of us, he saw the hand of God in our lives before we ourselves could see it. Pastor Taiwo is a nurturer. He invested time in nurturing and in teaching. You know, one of the things that would forever make me love my pastor, one day, someone called me and asked for a meeting. Why? He said, how can you run a ministry as big as Christian Missionary Fund and be a serving pastor in a church? I didn't understand because that was the only thing I knew. The only way I knew was the way of my pastor. I didn't know that it was an abnormality that in some other churches, you could not have a ministry that seemed, wasn't competing, but in some churches, either the ministry comes under the church or you shut down the ministry. I didn't even understand what the call was. When I told Pastor Taiwo that I had a dream to do something, something with missionaries, the man laughed, went to his very rich library, brought out some books, gave me homework, said, take, go and read, Pastor Blessing. When I finished reading, the next time he called me in church, he said, come, I've set up some missionaries from Capro to come and talk to you. They were waiting for me in church to come and uh, explain to me what missionary work in Nigeria was. The next time, he called me and said, okay, even though I just had a baby, you're going to go to mission school. I said, yeah. He said, yes. Christian Missionary Foundation is running a mission school at uh, Four Square in Yaba. One month, Monday to Thursday, every, sent me there. By the time I finished the school, I understood the call. And I'm sure that 95.5% of the time that Christian Missionary Fund held an event, Pastor Taiwo was sitting there, he was present, and he always gave. I am just saying he's a, nat he's a natural. He nurtures, he does not just encourage you. He nurtures the vision in all of our hearts. When he sends you forth, he sends you backing you up every step of the way. Let me tell you one most unusual thing about my pastor. Have you seen a pastor that comes one day and says that all the parishes that we have as a church in Nigeria, that as the Lord called him, he called all the pastors there too. That so on that day, even though Fountain had invested in the setup of all of those churches across the country, he released all of them, said everything invested in your church I give you. Go and prove your call and the ministry of the Lord in your life. He called you the way he called me. No materialistic instinct in Pastor Taiwo's life. That's what he taught us about ministry. He's a compassionate, selfless man. Pastor never thought about himself. 
Always. Pastors, think about yourself a little bit, please. But our pastor never thought about himself. Always, always, always thinking about us. He had an irrepressible spirit. I had to go and find a simple way to explain that. You know, full of energy, enthusiasm, it was impossible to stop. You know, pastor, I can jump from there to here. He can sing, he can love. He, he, I, don't, he, I cannot even explain the man because there are no words that can capture Pastor Taiwo as he was. Every pastor had full access. We don't have a pastor that you are shaking to see. No. We had a man, a human being who had feelings for other people. A father, a lover, a carer. We had a man who had a heart like Christ as a pastor. A man who thought about you before you think about yourself. A man who was in your corner before anybody decides that they want to help you. A man who fights your battle before you even know you're in the middle of a battle. That was Pastor Taiwo Dukoya. <laughs> Generous to a fault. We, I, I don't even know how many tributes we've received of people that we did not know where Pastor Taiwo met them and somebody said and he sent me 200,000 and he sent 100,000 and he did this. I was in England. I had a child that was autistic and he did this. I don't know when the man gets to heaven. Right now, I'd like to see how many stars are on his crown. You know, there's a song. Are you there? No, you are not. Okay, there's a song that I just want to say the words so that you can understand. But it, there's just, okay, you know what? Just because I want to beauty Pastor Aki. I want everybody to get up and just, if you're a fountainer, get up and just say the chorus of this song. The choir is going to sing the song in full later. But I want us, I want the largest choir in the world to sing to Pastor as in, is in heaven now. I want not the choir just singing it on behalf of us. I want him to hear our voices as you say, Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. Thank you, Pastor. We'll see you on the other side. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you were speaking on behalf of over 50, 60 fountain pastors, we let her have some extra time. The others come here are not speaking on behalf of 50, 60 pastors. Help me to welcome Pastor Shegun Williams, who is Pastor's brother in law, our Pastor Bimbo's younger brother. He doesn't talk much. No, no, I don't talk much. Just three or four max minutes. God bless you, sir. Thank you. I mean, you bring me after Pastor Blessing. What else do I have to talk about? Exactly. Hallelujah. Fountain of Life Church, can you feel the fire? Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, there's really nothing else to say that has not been spoken. But somebody came and made a prayer that we pray that the church will not die. The church cannot die. You see, because the church was not built upon a building. But when we were building this church, he built a DNA in us. And anywhere we are, we carry a fragrance. You see, you see, you see, all these things that we see and we used to justify the life of a man, it goes beyond the mortar and the bricks. Some of us today, the love we know of Christ, you see, uh, excuse me, eh? three minutes, I'll round up. Williams family. In the beginning, we had three watch, watchmen of fountain. In the beginning, without you know, when, when life was simple, it was innocent, and loving God was just simply e eating a, a, a meal a day, not with this one plenty meals today. There were three people in fountain. When you hear Murebo Soto, 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 you know you want to pray. You will pray, you will pray and pray and beg Pastor Fred to please leave the stage. Then, when you want to understand in palpable terms passion for Jesus I mean 
you want to see the exemplification of how to love God. You know, how to love God and hold it. That was Pastor Bimbo. She will show you. She will teach you. She will force you. She will... By, oh, my Father in heaven. And then you see Pastor Taiwo, a man of integrity, simplicity. And you see, some people came to Fountain arrogant. They are humble today. Do you understand? Because you see, when you see the person that is leading you and you can see humility, who are you to be arrogant? That is the DNA that we have. So, fountain, you can never die. We can never die in Jesus' name. Now, listen to me. You know, maybe some of us will gather after this very, you know, splendid you know, occasion and just shed some tears. I think it's befitting. Um, you know, I believe so. I think it's befitting that sometimes we just shed the tears, not because we, we mourn like we don't have hope. We have hope, but because this man has touched our lives in ways that we can't explain. You know, when you think you are nobody and somebody that you perceive to be somebody makes you feel important, then you wonder, there is something special about me. Pastor Taiwo always made us feel important. No matter who you are. Oh my goodness. You see, I had the opportunity to know Pastor Tao before the pastor started all this pastor, you know. You know, pastor is good. But you know, in those... Okay, let me tell you the story. Do you want to know the story? I should send my account number. I will tell you the story. Hallelujah. In the beginning, when boy meets girl, and boy sees anointing that is beautiful. I don't know why he did not see anointing that was not beautiful. And then he started pursuing my sister. There was something I noticed about him. Now, my father was very strict. Very strict. And my sisters are here now. You see, their husbands are still with them because they picked right. God, God help you if you come to our house and you say, want to, you want to see one of my sisters with my father. You die there. You die there. So I don't really know how Pastor got me, but you see, I now became the one that will carry the love letter to give Pastor Bimbo. You know, you know, she was number three, I'm number five. And then the youngest in the house, so she will always call me. And when it's coming, no, no, no GSM phone, no GSM. So I was in the spirit too. Because I will just know on a particular day that that Passat is outside at a particular time waiting to see my sister. Feeling important, young man like me. I will carry the note, give it to my sister. Holy sister of the gospel, anointed mother of God. What is in that note that is making your heart Go gidigba, gidigba. He said, wait for me. I will take reply. So before I understood what was happening, I became important. I became important. Who says last bones are not important? I bind you. Oh my God, my God, my God. If you are last, somebody say hallelujah. The lights have become fair. Forget that thing. Now listen to me. You see, you see, you know, you know, it is a privilege to be able to see the life of a man from the place where you understand it to start and then how it ends. This is a miracle. Because the man was not very well dressed actually, you know. Bushy hair. All those boots that came from the ancient of day soldiers. How old are you now? You know. But there was just something about the man. When you encounter pastor you know you have encountered something. And in the beginning of their courtship, because I was the one making them stay on the path of the good and narrow, so they can't go out without taking me along with them. So let's go and eat shawarma. She'll go come with us. Hallelujah. Let's go to the beach. So I walked with these people. Now the first thing that struck me when I got of age was they were so detailed not to give a perception of wrongdoing. They were so careful even in their own private moments, not to give occasion to the devil. So they gave me importance in the process. And I never made pastor forget. Even till, I would say, pastor, remember I'm your Allah <laughs> Reno. <laughs> Do the needful. <laughs> Hallelujah. They say a laborer is worthy of his wages. I collected my own in full. Praise the Lord. Now, you see the thing now, was that my parents, when Pastor Bim gave her life to Jesus, Pastor Bim won our parents because of her sobriety. You know that woman knows how to love you. She will love you to, to submission. 
when everybody we, were, we thought were fighting a fight against our dad, to, you know how it is when you are ignorant, life has not touched you. You think men are, are, are monsters, especially when you are children. Then when you enter life and you become a man, now see your father was a saint. You are the monster. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Pastor Bim did not follow the normal. She stood with the father and she, she, she preached Jesus to dad by her actions and her love and care. Now when Pastor Taiwo came, he brought a redefinition of who a child of God is. And I tell you this, not because I want to fanfare or I want to impress anybody. It's not really important. The reason why we tribute is to put out there into humanity that indeed a man lived, lived for Christ and his seeds testify of who that man is. Because we, we all know. We all know who he is. We can talk. Everybody has a part, a part to say here. Anyway, Pastor, these are my parents. First of all, by this uncanny wisdom to be able to know how to manage older people. Before I could say Jack Robinson, I was not important anymore. <laughs> so I tried to build a wedge so that at least call she go to talk. No, 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 no. The first encounter, it was finished. Because pastor is a man of wisdom. A very local man. We just tried to funkalize pastor. He was so... Pastor Blessing says it. You see, we tried to make him touch. Pastor was just too real. And my father found comfort in pastor because there were some things that he was contending with as a man. And when you meet a younger man but has a wisdom that supersedes yours, you defer to that person without stress. That's why my father could call pastor, pastor, without feeling bashful that I'm the father of your wife. But he ended it by the wisdom and the humility that he, he demonstrated. And he does it so effortlessly that if you don't pay attention, you might miss it. You might, you might just miss it. And pastor was a pastor to my parents. And the seed that, the, that pastor Bim sowed in their life became established by the character they found in pastor Taiwo. And when they feel upset with pastor Bim, they don't talk to pastor Bim anymore. They go and call pastor Taiwo. It got to a point where pastor Bim first said, ah, but daddy, he talked to me. He said, no, no. Let me talk to your husband. He earned it. He earned it. Now, we can talk church. You know something? When we come to church, we, we, we wear a cloak. But pastor had no cloak. The love for God was his love for God ab initio till the end. No, no, no deception, no color, no, no, no mago mago, no politics. All he wanted was just to love the Lord. And that he, he exemplified even in his courtship with Pastor Ben. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Ah. Oh. Hey, hey. oh no. Two minutes. One minute. Okay. We celebrate Pastor Tyo. And we all have a conclusion. This was a good man. You know, the truth is this. The ointment in the alabaster is comfortable and finds security and safety within that alabaster. And we don't want that alabaster to be broken. But when the Lord wants to send that ointment on assignment, he will break the alabaster. Even though the alabaster is broken, we are the fragrance. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. We are the fragrance. We carry the job and continue. Same to the devil. Hallelujah. You are not cooperating with me. All of you, apart from my fathers and the Lord in front, you are not cooperating. When he said, do you want to hear a story? You said yes. Ah, you should have said no. Hallelujah. Let us move on. Uh, I'm going to be calling on pastor's brother, Pastor John Odukoya. For his, for his very brief, praise the Lord, tribute. And let me come to you. Somebody praise the Lord. But this is my, no, it's not, it's not a change, so. Is it? 
if you have been encouraged by the Lord, say hallelujah. Now, if you have been sustained by grace, say amen. I'm standing here because he has sustained me by his grace. You know, I'm going to be telling you some things that are personal. It's okay that everybody talks about Pastor Taiwo Dukoya as the father, the caregiver, the compassionate, and everything because it's, it's everything to everybody. But when the family talks about him, I know it carries weight. If you want to know a real man, you don't listen to what the press are saying. You come to the house and say, is this so? The guy that was blind and uh, that, that, that Jesus healed, they didn't believe anybody. They went to the mother. Is this your son? The blind one. Because they want to hear the real story about the real man. I'm here representing the Udukoya family and I stand to say Pastor Taiwo Udukoya was a real man. You see, if you look at the concept of subset in a set, myself, Taiwo and Ken, they were like the middle children, fourth, fifth, sixth. So we are the subset in a set. Now the pain, the pain in the now is the two in that subset are gone. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a, a, a lonely place. The way I related to Pastor Taiwo, I'm not saying it to mean anything, but I can never relate to any of my siblings at that level. You know, sometimes he will call me and say, hey, Pastor John, how was your night? I say, uh, kind of peaceful. Sometimes, oh, man, very turbulent. I fought all through. He said, okay, tell me, tell me, tell me. I say, ah, I can't quite remember. Holy Spirit, help me. You remember? Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> you know, you know your pastor. And I'll say, I think I saw a man in a company of maybe three, I'm just saying it. They say, okay, tell me about the man. A kind of tall, he was carrying something with a blue shirt, uh -huh. and he said that, a brown paint, yes. And there are other two people with it, yes. How do you know? He had the same dream, same night, just like I did. It happened a couple of times. Seriously. For four and a half years, we prayed every day for 30 minutes. Every day of the week, except for Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Now, when he came in May, around June, this song, Ebamigbe, Jesuiga. And the part that kept coming to me is that, Timbagbegao, Niliaye. And he was telling me that he will soon be going there to join the heavenly worship. Now, I was fighting the fight of faith. He was saying it to me that he will soon be joining them, exalting Jesus. Very soon. I said, no. My sibling will call me and be asking about this man. What? How is he? Is he, has he opened his eyes? Is he standing? I said, what's wrong with you guys? What, what? I told my, the elders, I said, I'm going through stress. If you add to my stress, I will snap. <laughs> because he that is called to be a soldier cannot conform with their fears. I don't want to be distracted, confused, thrown away. I am praying and I'm focusing. I don't want to hear nothing by nothing. But as the time start to Closing, Jimmy, ref Jimmy refused to believe that. I said, Jimmy, I see some. He said, no, uncle, uncle, no, no, uncle. Okay, okay. L let's keep the faith going. 
During our prayer time, he introduced that we need to start to break bread. Once we finish the 30 minutes break, uh, prayer, it's a break bread, break bread. And I told Jimmy one day, I said, next time I come here, we're going to start to break bread. I go there every other day. I went on Wednesday, we break bread. We did the anointing. I went on Friday, we break bread. We did the anointing. I went on Sunday, we break bread. We did the anointing. And I look at his eyes on Sunday. He, he looks so calm, just sitting, looking, but not looking at me. It was just, just so fresh. Do you know the pastor Taiwo did not experience pain? Let me say it to the world. He did not experience pain. We never have cause to give him tally, no panadol, no. He did not experience pain. And this man spoke in tongues for three months without stopping. It's like... And, and, and if I enter his room, and first maybe you just see his leg before you see his face, the leg... He, you, see, you see, no wonder in Genesis 5, you not know, serve the Lord faithfully and he was no more. Because the way he was, he already keyed into God, it was so much that the Lord took him. The Lord just took him. I saw this on Sunday and I received a call on Monday morning. My phone was not on mute. And I hear, no, 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 Jimmy Oduka, I jump. To call me at that time means trouble. I said, uncle, 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 daddy passed. So it was a shock to the world. The Lord already prepared me that he's taking his son home. And we saw that. We saw that. Uh, you know, it, it, Isaiah 57 Verse 1 in New International Version says, The righteous perish and no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. We don't seem to understand. And I will bring understanding with this just uh, story. An elderly woman came to visit us on the occasion of his passing. And she told me that an evangelist went to a suburb village to stage a three-day crusade. And the first night, signs and wonders, people received healing. A lot of people came to Christ. The second day, larger crowd gathered. And the third day, it was the final. The, uh, the, all chairs were taken. People started to drag in their chairs, their mats, and everything. The place was big, big gathering. And just like they set it up, the clouds started to gather. The atmosphere started to get darker. And then, the winds start to come. They prayed against the rain. They prayed for the rain not to come. And the evangelist said, Lord, you will not disappoint me. This is your work. If you disappoint me, God, and you allow it to rain, I will stop serving you. The rain came. Heavy flood. He was so dejected, disappointed, discouraged. He was walking down the street and he just sat down by the roadside. And a young man approached him. Man of God, pray for me. He said, I'm not man of God. And he said, but God loves you. You see, I was the one sent from our group. And I was standing by the tree waiting for you to mount the podium to kill you. The rain disturbed it. So, you we, 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 no, devout men are taken and we do not understand. If this man, had, well, after I realized that he was going to die, the Lord was going to take him. I said, Lord, you gave Ezekiah 15 years. I'm not asking for 15, just for uh, 10, 10, 10, just 10. But he didn't answer his son's prayer because Jesus needs to die for so many things to happen. So his dying is not him just dying. It's a transition to open up the ministry of Pastor Daniel Tawo Dukoya to another dimension. I'm saying it with confidence because I know. I know. 
Uh, we still read the books of Charles Spurgeon, right? The things are going to be packaged in a way that in death, the Lord is being glorified. I will say this, death is not the end of man. Jesus is. Jesus is. There was a lady I met in the plane back to U.S. 18 years ago. I was, I believe, during the, pro, during the time of Pastor Bimbo. And since then, she just blew to me. She called me. I've been canceling her. And now this young woman, you now with three children and all that, they, they moved to a new house. They just built the, the housing community. If I don't show you, you won't believe. Amen. But blessed are they that didn't see that but believe. Amen. I want to say, Pastor, Pastor, give me a second. I need to do this. It's just it's important. I'm trying to see right now. Hold a minute. Yeah, I want to. It's uh, okay. I'll be saying it. She showed me the video of the new house, this new settlement all around. And the next thing he, she sent to me was a book by Pastor Bimbo Dukoya. And it, it, it says how to choose a life partner. She said, I saw this in the house. I said, your new house? She said, yes. And she said, it's still new. No, you don't believe it. That is why I want to... Okay, I'll show it to you we quickly, believe, quickly, we, we quickly. Believe you, sir. We quickly. Believe, we believe. See, 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 see. I don't know if you can see this. She texted this to me and said, I found this in the new house that just been built. Nobody ever occupied it yet. And he said that how to choose a life partner. You can see me in blue. How I said, Wow, in the new house, she said yes. 18 years ago. Her work is still touching life, changing soul, converting Hallelujah. people. Now, Pastor Tawo just dropped. So, another 20 years, his work is still going to be touching life. Fountain Amen. of life, church. The church is marching on. Hallelujah. The gates of hell cannot prevail. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. God bless you. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much, Pastor John, sir. I know it's extremely difficult to try and encapsulate the life of our dear pastor in a few minutes. It's just totally uh, an impossible task. Let me uh, call on Pastor's sister, Mrs. Iyabo Ilidari, to come and share a tribute. She too doesn't talk too much. Abyssis, hallelujah. Five minutes, please. Good evening, Daddy. Good evening, Mommy. Good evening, everyone. Holy Spirit. I stand here this evening representing Pastor Taiwo's four younger siblings, namely Olumide Udukoya, Ayodeji Udukoya, Mrs. Bola Bayo Kujore, Ayamiyabo De Ledare. If anyone has told us that we shall be gathering here this evening to read pastor's tributes or listen to people elogize him, we will have tagged him or her a fake prophet. At least, not so soon, but here we are. Praise the name of the Lord. Some of us proudly and fondly called him Papa, because that is what he was to us, Papa. We all grew up together. We all grew up together, but the close relationship that some of us had with him in the last two years far outweighed the ones we ever had with him in 50 or 60 something years past. We didn't know that God was preparing us for his home call. If we knew, maybe we would have doubled or even tripled our visit to him.
to enjoy more of his peaceful nature and learn more from his wealth of experience. We won't trade this moment we shared with him in the last two years for anything in the world. We shall be eternally grateful to God for the opportunity. Pastor Taiwo Daniel Oduka was not only an embodiment of love, peace, and humility, which, of, which was a replica of our earthly father. He also built on the Christian foundation that Baba laid, and he took it to a higher level in the service of God and humanity. He ran his Christian race with passion, total commitment to God, completely sold out for Christ, and full of faith, even in the face of adversities. He never made negative confessions about his challenges, and whenever we called to find out about his well-being, his responses usually were, Jesu Mashim, Emimi Mon Shishe, Modupe, and he will laugh out loud enough that the person at the other end will hear, hereby calming our fears. We knew he was going through some challenges, but he managed it so well because he did not want to scare us. Always positive in his responses and ever bubbling. No dull moments went with him. He lived a quiet and impactful life. He was a complete gentleman, beautiful inside out, very warm and receptive. He was a good listener, always ready to help and provide solutions no matter the nature of our concerns. And this he did, not only to us, but even to our spouses as well. He had an infectious smile for everyone he came across. He was quick to forgive and never ready to reconcile and apologizes even when he was the injured or offended. Um, apologizes are made in capital for emphasis. Something like carrot and stick approach. He made sure we had a voice, defended us, <laughs> frowned at bad behavior, and corrected us with love. Knowing that we are younger, he was a man of integrity and accountability. May the Lord bless his beautiful soul. Pastor Taiwo was our pastor, our mentor, our confidant, our brother, and friend. He was a cheerleader who was always there to genuinely celebrate every of our achievements and win. He shared in our joy and always made our time for us in spite of his busy schedule. That is to say, he never looked down on us, though younger siblings to him. His relationship with us gave us sense of belonging, making us very free and comfortable to discuss any of our problems with him. This trait he extended even to our children, his nieces and nephews. He had a one-on-one -on -one relationship with all his nephews and nieces, and he celebrated their individual wins, especially in the area of academics, in a unique manner. He was a great support system to all of us. Talking about fashion, Pastor Rokon, <laughs> he sees front. One laju, his eyes were open. He dressed well, a fashion icon. His dressings were not loud, but unique. Whenever I put on, whatever I put on suits him so well. His color combinations were always on point. He taught us fashion. He appreciated good dressing and never held back to compliment such. He, he had passion for Nigeria and was always saying, praying for Nigeria. No wonder he said he wished to come back to Nigeria on time because there is excitement in Nigeria. So you can imagine our pain and shock when the news of his home call came to us. He was always communicating with his maker by speaking in tongues until his last breath. Indeed, a vacuum has been created, which only the Holy Spirit can fill. Our brother came, he saw, and he conquered.
We shall meet at the feet of Jesus, where we shall part no more. We shall see ourselves, we shall embrace ourselves. Jesus Christ shall be the chair. It is well, O Pastor Taiwo. Your memory, your beautiful and infectious smile will ever remain fresh in our hearts. We love you, Pastor Taiwo. That we shall miss you is an understatement. Rest in peace, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Tolu to do a Bible reading. God bless you. Up, up, up. Good evening. I do apologize that we're taking so much time. Sorry, my sorry, sir. I do apologize. The Bible reading is Isaiah 43, verses 1 to 3. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba in your place. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Heaven rejoices at the translation at the translation heaven rejoices at the translation of our father, Pastor Daniel Taiwo Udukoya, with great pomp. We are all beneficiaries of the impact of this angel. Undoubtedly, generations yet unborn will also benefit from his influence. He was a man on a mission, be it in peaceful calm or in the versus raging storms. He marched on gallantly with his mandate. A teacher, a mentor, a coach, a leader, a friend, and more. Oh, what a man, what a life, what a legacy. I dreamed I went to heaven. And you were there with me We walked upon the streets of gold Beside the crystal sea We heard the angels singing As someone called your name You turned and saw this young man And he was smiling as he came And he said, a friend you may not know me now And then I said, but wait You used to teach me Sunday school yeah, When I was only eight And every week you would say a prayer Before the service would end And one day when you said that prayer I asked Jesus in my heart so thank you for giving to the Lord oh, I am the light that was changed Thank you for giving to the Lord oh, I am so glad you came one by one they came Far as the eye could see Each life somehow touched By your generosity The many things that you had done 
sacrifice is made noticed here on earth in heaven now proclaimed and I know up in heaven you're not supposed to cry but I'm almost sure there were tears in your eyes as Jesus took your hand and just stood before the Lord he said I shall look around you for great great is your reward oh, oh, oh. finish your race yes you I have Thank you for giving everything you had. Oh, I am so glad you came. That was said So glad you came. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the grace Levites. This is the best choir this side of heaven. In case you do not know, put those hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're now going to have tributes from pastors biological children hallelujah so they will come as they choose hallelujah amen pastor's children okay I see Timile and Jomiloju coming forward encourage them hallelujah Good evening, church. Um, I will be speaking on behalf of my brother and I on our father. Um, our father raised us with our mother, but one of the final lessons that he taught us was how we should like, make a name for ourselves. When he was growing up, he said that some of his classmates had fathers that were governors and rich and famous, etc., but he didn't and he had to focus on his academics and focus on improving on himself to become the best he could be. And then he said he became better than most of them all were. And today we can see why as all these people gather here. So he said that that should rely on me because I'm one of the youngest in my class and I'm typically shy. And me and my brother, he's different from me, but we share similar traits so he taught us in his final years with us to talk more to make a name for ourselves and not to 
like rely on your father's work. He said, it's not between your father and my father, it's between you and I. And he said that to us all the time. He said that to us all the time. So he was training us into becoming men. And I've become more able to express myself because of him and a better person. So honestly, I would just like to say that because of that final message, he has started my journey into becoming a man, and I would like to become the man he would be. He would like me to be. So, I just want to say that rest in peace, and we will become men that you'll be proud of someday. Thank you. Good evening, church. For my tribute, I'm going to do what I saw my father do. And I'm going to encourage you as the Holy Spirit has been encouraging me. Today, I choose not to mourn the life of my father. No. <laughs> I choose to celebrate his life. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, O oh death, where is your victory? O oh death, where is your sting? Death is only victorious over those who do not know God. But for us who do, we are victorious over death through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I am confident of this. At the face of death, my father did not mourn, and he's not mourning now. My dad has made the ultimate transition to glory. I see him praising and worshiping God, and this song keeps coming up in my head as I see him. He's saying, come and join me, sing hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh has done me well. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh has done me well. And how are we sure of these things? The Bible says that we should stand strong when we encounter death. Because nothing we do for God is a waste of time or effort. Everything we do counts. And as you have heard today and you have seen today, my dad truly lived for God. Today you are sitting in an auditorium that is a testament of my dad's dedication to God. And for a lot of you here today, you are here because you are a life that was changed because he gave to the Lord. My dad was able to accomplish all he did because he lived a life after God's heart with the Holy Spirit as his senior partner. He took on the scripture in Acts 17 that says, in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. So everything he did, he did through the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I want to address you all today because I want you to know that as children of God, nothing that happens in our lives catches God by surprise. I've heard people talk about a sudden death. I've heard people be confused, almost like men of God are not supposed to die. <laughs> now let me ask you this. Who can catch God by surprise? Who can stand against the Lord and win that battle? Surely God has no rival and he has no equal. So no one and absolutely nothing can take a man who served God with all his heart and all his life if God did not allow that to happen. And this is not sentiment. This is the word of God. Because we know in Job that even the devil has to seek permission before he can act out his plans. So be rest assured, 
it was not a sudden death. It was his time. Because God had called him home. My father's confidence and unraving faith in God came from knowing these things. It came from understanding that even when to the world it looks like everything is failing, God never fails. The Bible says in Romans 8, 27, that for those who who are children of God, the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf according to the will of God. And then the next verse says, and then all things work together for our good. So working with the Spirit of God and the outcomes of our lives go hand in hand. This is why my father always ran back to God in all things. This is why you could always find my father at the feet of Jesus. My father has left us a great legacy, one that is left for you and I to now tap into. It is no coincidence, like Pastor Kune also said, that this is the year of our Holy Spirit. The strong, this strong relationship with the Holy Spirit is the legacy that my dad has left. And if you do not walk with the Holy Spirit, I want to encourage you today, it's about time that you did. Till we meet again, Dad, I love you. Your Toby Mama. Fountain, the general has gone home, but we are still here. So that means the work continues. And the last time I checked, a lion cannot give birth to a goat. So for anyone who cares to hear, whether they like it or not, out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water and it is the fountain of life out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water and in it is the fountain of life my father's scripture Isaiah 8 18 behold I and the children the Lord has given unto me are for signs and wonders in Israel, fountain my father was a sign. He was a sign that we could be hard pressed on every side, but never crushed. That we might be perplexed, but never in despair. That we may be, we, we may be struck down, but never destroyed. Listen to me. Whether they like it or not. Whether they like it or not. He was a sign that you can love God totally. You can love God unashamedly. You can love God completely with integrity and character. He was a sign. And you know that the word of God does not return to him void. The second part says, and the children that he has given unto me are for signs and wonders. Fountain, we are for wonders. The earth is waiting for the earnest manifestations of the sons and daughters of God and whether they like it or not we will arise and we will shine for our light has come see the glory of the Lord is risen upon us you see darkness might cover the earth and deep darkness but the Lord shall arise on fountain of life you see, in him was light, <laughs> and that light became the light of men. And this light shines in darkness, and darkness. You see, David fought so Solomon can build. <laughs> Pastor Taiwo fought. And the Bible says when it was time, he gave him rest on every side. Now fountain, it is time to build. Unless a seed falls to the ground and dies. 
it abided alone but when it dies it creates much fruit look around you the fruit of pastor Taiwo is speaking now Moses my servant is dead arise and take the people over the Jordan and everywhere your foot tread upon I shall give it to you for your possession and no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses I shall be with you as he was with Pastor Taiwo he shall be with us <laughs> so arise he says he will never leave us he will never forsake us so be strong and be full of courage can you feel the fire woohoo Hallelujah. I'm just going to do what my dad always would do, which is worship. So please worship with me. I will sing a few of my dad's favorite worship Yoruba songs. Hero didu, lori sera.
Put those hands together for the Lord. Put those hands together for the Lord. Put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is Pastor Taiwo's legacy. Unbeatable. Somebody help me praise this Jesus again. Somebody help me praise this Jesus again. Praise this Jesus again. Praise this Jesus again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very quickly, I'm going to call up a music minister, Victor Thompson, to lead us in a session for five minutes. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Can you make it louder? Give Jesus praise in here tonight. Fountain of life. Can you give Jesus praise? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I want to celebrate the patriarchs and matriarchs in here. Thank you so much. God bless you real good. I celebrate you real good. How many of, how many of us are grateful to God that that is in a better place tonight? How many of us are grateful to God? So we just want to love on God. We just love on God. Wherever you are, just lift your heart. Open your heart. And give God worship. You are beautiful beyond description. For what? Too wonderful. Too wonderful for comprehend. Like nothing. Who can, who can, your infinite wisdom, who can fathom the depths of your love, you are beautiful, you are beautiful, beyond description, majesty. Stand, I stand, I stand. We stand in honor of you. We stand, Holy God, to whom all praises do. We stand in awe. We stand in awe. One more time, raise it. I stand, I stand, I stand. I, I stand in awe of you. Oh. We stand, we stand, we stand, we stand. You were beautiful. Holy God, we stand in honor of you. All of our praises do. We stand in honor of you, Jesus. Holy God. Stand is not like a minute, like a minute, like a holy God, holy, yeah, yeah, all of my praises do. 
All of our praises do We're standing up Cause no power of hell No scheme of men Can ever block Me from his hands Stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there. No power of hell There is no scheme of men Go back to where we started from. No pa without the music. That's it. No can ever has the power. Hey! Me from no power. No pa of no scheme of men. Can ever. Me from his hands till he returns, till he returns. or calls me home. Here, here, dependable. Dependable God It doesn't matter what comes my way You are still God oh, Intentional Intentional God Everything Everything is working out for me 
dependable God Dependable, dependable It doesn't matter what comes my way It makes everything work. I like that attack again. It's your barretto. Oh, do mommy. Oh, yeah. So you will not as God. God alone. You are God alone. And right now. And right now. In the good and the bad. Wait, wait, wait. We didn't get it. We didn't get it. We didn't get it. In the good times and good. You are. We don't record bad. Always. So you are God alone from before time began. You are God alone. You are God alone. Celebrate Jesus in here tonight. Celebrate Jesus in here tonight. Can you make some noise to Jesus? Hallelujah. 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 Amen. We could go on and on in worship, but time is not on our side this evening. Hallelujah. It is time for the word. And I'm going to be inviting most humbly the senior pastor of Daystar Christian Center, the Reverend Sam Adeyemi, to give us a short exhortation this evening. Praise the Lord. I feel like asking you again, can you feel the fire? <laughs> our Father in the Lord, Bishop Mike, and our mother, Bishop Peace, Okonko, thank you. Thank you on many levels. as we watched Pastor Taiwo's biography. And I saw that picture where you laid hands on them and realized you are here tonight. <clears throat> to be a part of the celebration of a general 
that God from your spiritual bosom gave our world a general. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my sister, Mrs. Dolapo Shivajo. Happy to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my brother, Pastor Paul Adefarasi. Thank you. Happy to see you. <clears throat> and I mean, so many, so many pastors here today, ministers of the gospel. And to Tolu, Pastor Tolu, Pastor Jimmy, Pastor Toby, <clears throat> and Jomiloju and Timilain, we love you. And tonight, you have encouraged us in a way perhaps nobody has could. Wow. And I'm glad to be here with my sweetheart, Pastor Nike. Okay, so to be honest, the news of Pastor Taiwo's passing hit hard. When I got the phone call, I was shouting. And when I dropped the call, I cried. And then when I calmed down, I want to get my sweetheart and broke the news to her gently. <laughs> Pastor Taiwo was especially kind to us. He was a kind man. Because we will never forget the fact that when God led us to start Daystar Christian Center, in our period of transition, while we were praying, we decided to attend a service, a midweek service at Fountain of Life Church. Incognito, right? We just wanted to come, just sit in the congregation, attend the service and just watch. But somehow, some people cited us <laughs> and told Pastor Taiwo and Pastor Bimbo, and they recognized us, and right after the service said we should come along with them to the office. And so when we told them, oh, we were in transition, you know, God had moved us on to do something new. The first thing was, so what are you people eating? What are you eating? <laughs> right? And straight away, they got some cash, you know, and gave us money, gave us cash. And it's just making you good to have something to eat. Right? We can never forget that. And later on, they gave us a check towards the starting of Daystar Christian Center. Right? <laughs> 60,000 Naira in 1995 was a lot of money. I remember Within the next two years, I think it was the following, 96 or 97, they had, there was this crusade that was organized by the church in Badagri. Right? Some of us here were there. And pastor requested for me to come along to preach. You know, that was very encouraging. And I was thinking, oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm not a crusade person. <laughs> I like to teach. But he insisted. Um, we joined in the prayers and all that, and then got to the crusade, and I was amazed because there was an anointing on that crusade. And there were healings, and there were miracles, and all that. And that just buttresses what we've been hearing all night, that Pastor Taiwo is a nurturer. A nurturer, right? Uh, some time back, we were led to send him a gift. And he called me on the phone, you know, and said, oh, I saw what you sent. He said it was so timely, 
He, was so, he said, I just, I, I just said to myself, this one is a son of encouragement. Listen, it is fathers that name people. Oh yeah, did you notice Jesus used to name people? <laughs> right? They call out the potential in people. Nobody had called me that before. And that's why I've not forgotten, right? <laughs> he named me. <laughs> and it was April this year that Pastor Nick got on a flight in Atlanta, flying to Lagos, and he walked up to her, right? And they got talking and talking and talking and sharing. He was sharing his experiences. And so the next day when they were landing in Lagos was her birthday. So she mentioned that to him just before the flight landed in Lagos. It's my birthday today. And he said, oh, wow, 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 wow. Okay, okay. You know, let's take a selfie. <laughs> let's take a selfie. Then he said to her, Mama, fly. Mama, fly. Don't read social media. Mama, fly. <laughs> <laughs> and truly, he posted the picture <laughs> and wished her a happy birthday. Kind man. So, After I calmed down, you know, from hearing the news, then I was processing, because that's what I do. I process everything through the word. And this passage came to me. So let me share it with you. First Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, from the New International Version. First Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in debt so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So to be candid, as I was trying to imagine Pastor Taiwo's state, you know, what, what just came to me was the moment he was getting into heaven and he saw Pastor Bimbo. You know? <laughs> Honestly, the, the scenario that played in my brain was, hey, hey! Check it, Mr. T! You know? In a boisterous street like that. <laughs> What I saw was a, was a joyful reunion. When he would see Pastor Nomti, joyful reunion. And then, oh, there's something that caught to me. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Some people will be asking, oh, okay. Well, will they ha have any romantic feelings? <laughs> then I remembered the people that asked Christ. Oh, there was this particular lady. Seven brothers married her according to the culture. Okay, so when they get to heaven, so whose wife will she be out of the seven? He said, you, you've missed it. You disciple, you've missed it. You don't know the scriptures. You don't know the power of God. Marriage is only on this level. Marriage is only on this level. Yeah. There are emotions that you can never experience down here. They are superior, superior to sex, superior to anything. Right? So, with that, I just realized also, now, Pastor Taiwo is now capable of experiencing emotions that he could never have experienced down here. Emotions that human beings have no words to describe. Positive emotions. Love. Pure love. Right? Joy. Peace. Beauty. Like we can't experience here. And I remember that Christ told those people, why is God called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? 
not the late Abraham, the late Isaac, the late Jacob. He said he is not the God of the dead, he is the God of the living. So, when I asked, what should I share here today? He just said to me, he is not dead, he is sleeping. So if you like to give a title to a message, he is not dead, he is sleeping. And instantly, I recognized that vocabulary. It's not normal on this plane. It's for a particular dimension. Do you remember Jesus used those words when he was down here? At the house of Jairus, when the daughter died. When he got there, his reaction was different, his response was different, and what he said was different. He said, why all this noise? She is not dead. She is only sleeping. Man is a miracle that was created to exist in two dimensions at the same time. God's dimension, which we call eternity, and the material dimension. Listen, even God does not have a material body. Angels don't have a physical body, right? It, man is a miracle, existing in two dimensions, two worlds, two realities at the same time. That was the design. And the very life that flows in God was what God put in man from the beginning. We call it eternal life. There's a quality of life that flows in everything that is animate. There's a quality of life that flows in plants, makes them to behave like plants. The quality of life in animals, there's a quality of life in humans. Then there's a quality of life in God. And man was meant to be powered by the life in God. So when God said, the day you sin, you will die, it was that life he was talking about primarily. You will cease to have eternal life. You will cease to function at my level. And it is that quality of life that determines your level of intelligence. It says you're going to lose all that. So Adam sinned. And that happened, right? But then gratefully, Jesus Christ came, died, paid for our sins, and restored eternal life back to us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so my point here is that when you are powered by eternal life, by zoe, by the quality of life that flows in God, right? The Greek word is zoe then you can operate at the level of God's intelligence. You literally have God's nature. And that's why Jesus said, except someone is born again, he cannot see or experience the kingdom of God. Why did he use the word born? Because you derived your nature from the person that gave birth to you. Until you are born by the spirit of God. Until the spirit of God removes the nature of sin. The one Adam got, right, from Satan. Until the Spirit of God removes it and puts God's nature in you, you cannot experience the kingdom of God. And I just want to say here, right, that when you have eternal life and you now have the capacity to think like God, feel like God, talk like God, act like God, the perspectives from God's dimension are very different from perspectives from the human dimension. The perspectives are different. And because the perspectives are different, the vocabulary is different. That's why in the passage that we read, right, it said, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 14, brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, right, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who are falling asleep. Isn't that interesting? Yes, in our economy, in our dimension, the God dimension, we only sleep. Amen? We sleep. John 11, John 11, they told Jesus about Lazarus, his friend. What did he say? Verses 11 to 14, New International Version. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, 
he will get better. <laughs> they were on a different plane. They did not understand what he was saying. Right? <laughs> His friend Lazarus was dead. But he didn't want to call death death because he was, right? Functioning from a different level. He said, my friend, Laz- our friend Lazarus is sleeping. I am going to wake him. Ah, boss, no need to go. If he's sleeping, he will wake up. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Ah, So if you won't, (laughs) if you won't understand my language, let me step down to your level. Okay, he's dead. So I love that passage, that passage Jimmy quoted. John 12, verses 24 and 25. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains the way it is. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. And Christ was describing his own death. The context. They said some Greeks, some people from Greece came and told the disciples of Jesus, we want to see Jesus. We must see Jesus. And remember, he was functioning under the covenant of Abraham. So he only was getting across to the Jews. Told his disciples to only get across to the Jews. Now Gentiles, non-Jews were insisting, we too want to see Jesus. The moment they told Jesus, he said, "Ah, I'm going to reach them. But not in this state. Ah, Not in this state. I will reach them, but not in this state. I won't reach them directly. This corn of wheat, needs to fall to the ground and die. But then, I will turn into a miraculous harvest. And it is that fruit, miracle fruit, that will reach them. Isn't that amazing? That's what we're witnessing. Everybody needs to get ready. One, Daniel Taiwo Odukoya passed on to glory. Get ready for millions. So let me just add that when you have the life of God and function from God's perspective, from God's dimension, it changes your perspective to life, changes your perspective, for example, to time. Because time only exists in this dimension. It doesn't exist in God's dimension. I was discussing this with my cousin a few days ago. He said, actually, I caught myself doing something wrong. I used to say, time is short. Time is short. He said, now I've come to realize time is not short. No, he says, people say life is short, right? Life is short. He said, I've come to realize when you look at it from God's, God's dimension, life is not short. Eternal life is not short. He said, actually, it is time that is short. Life is not short. Let's speak God's vocabulary. Let's see from God's dimension. Peter the Apostle said, a day in God's sight is like a thousand years, right? And a thousand years is like one day. So you say, oh Lord, Lord, this thing is getting late. What are you saying? Late for when? Where are you going? Who decided the timing, <laughs> right? So many years ago, I was saying, Lord, you know, our church was... You know, growing, so I, I said, Lord, we're, 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 we're stagnating. We're, we're stagnat-. He said, who told you you are, you are stagnating? I said, we're not making progress. He said, who told you you are not making progress? Your definition of progress is different from mine. For you, progress is always forward motion. He said, for me, progress is for you to do whatever I ask you to do part time, including standing on the same spot. I said, ah. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. We're making progress. <laughs> We're making progress. Finally, you know, consciousness of this eternal life, looking from God's perspective, gives us mastery over this life. It frees us from worry. Read Matthew 6. Frees us from worry. Don't worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will put on. After these things, the Gentiles are chasing. Seek first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness, these things will be extras. Don't lay up treasure for yourself on earth where moth and rust corrupt 
lay up treasures for yourself on the other side. Moth and rust cannot get there. Changes our perspectives to life completely. So, bear this in mind today. Some of the things we do in this life count in eternity. Some of the things we do in this life don't count. And it is at the point of transition to the other side that it hits many people. Like the rich man and Lazarus. That story Jesus told. The moment they cross to the other side, the guy who had been wealthy, who had been celebrated, who had been called a success here, something suddenly dawned on him. You notice, he said, I'm so thirsty. Father Abraham, send Lazarus to dip his finger in water and just drop some of my tongue so that it will quench this thirst. I said, where do you think you are? You want to send Lazarus on errand? You think things are still the way they were? Abraham said, my friend, shut up. There's a big gap. He said, first of all, your status has changed. <laughs> and then there's a big gap right now between us and you, you can't come here, we can't come there. You, remember, you know what happened next? The man said, oh my God. Please, please, just one more request. Send Lazarus to my brothers. Send Lazarus to my brothers. Ah, My brothers must not come here. I was their mentor. I was their role model. Ah, Send Lazarus to my brothers. And that's the point. Of all the things you achieve on this planet, it is the ones that add value to people that will go with you into eternity. All your certificates, you leave them behind. All the houses you build, leave them behind. All those accomplishments and the awards and certificates they gave you. Except they were done in love. So Jesus said on that day, I will tell some people, I was hungry, you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me water to drink. Jesus said, those, even those people who argue with God, you, God, when did I see you? Hungry? You? He will say yes. As long as you did it to any of the least of these people, you were doing it to me. So I came to the conclusion, most people will find out after they die that they met God, but they did not recognize him. Because every human, whether they speak in tongues or not, is an extension of God. Whatever you will never give God, don't give it to another human being. If your job is to clean chairs before people sit down, clean it as if it is God that will sit on it. Because it is God that will sit on it from our own economy. So looking from that perspective, you will understand what's been going on here today. If you came to cry, sorry, we came to celebrate the transition of a general. When a human is introduced into this planet, say this and we pray, right? When a human is introduced into this planet, what do we do? We rejoice. When a baby is born, we do what? We rejoice. So when, when you look from God's economy, would you agree with me that it was not the day the baby was born that the baby started existing? No. In God's economy, okay, was it the day Christ was born that he began to exist? He had existed from the eternity dimension. Am I right? He was introduced into the womb of Mary, was born into this world, and there was celebration and rejoicing. And the day he went back, the Bible says he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Like soldiers would do in those, ways, in those days after winning a war bringing the captives with them and all the goods that they packed. And then the people in the city would line up both sides, hailing them as they arrived. And they would take gifts and throw to the people in the crowd. When Christ entered heaven, that's how he was welcomed. A hero's welcome. The amazing thing, he did not throw the gifts to the angels. He threw them back to us. One of those gifts was Pastor Daniel Taiwo Odukoya. 
Because he says, and he gave apostles. Some were apostles, some were prophets, some were evangelists, pastors, and teachers, right? Yep. You are one of those gifts. <laughs> so when a baby is born into this world, the baby's been existing before. Introduced into this planet, we celebrate. God's design is that at the point of exit, when you enter heaven, that's how heaven also should celebrate. You remember Jesus said, there is joy in heaven among the angels, the day one sinner repents. Yeah, there's celebration. So the day actually that a general, a saint, leaves this planet and enters heaven back, there's rejoicing. That is what I see that happened when Pastor Daniel Taiwo Dukoya stepped back into glory. I think there was celebration. I, I, I know there was celebration. Stephen saw the same thing in Acts chapter 7, right? They were stoning him, throwing rocks at him, right? His bones breaking. He said, I see the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Well, Ephesians 2.6, they said he was sitting. Right now, somebody was about to come back home. And Christ stood up with the host of heaven to receive someone who had invested his life fulfilling God's calling. So tonight, if you see, we've been shouting and singing and celebrating. We're only tuning in to what is going on in God's dimension. There is celebration going on. There is shouting going on. There is singing going on. If you don't mind, can we join them? Just for some seconds. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth <laughs> as it is in heaven. Will you stand with me? Lord, we are grateful that you gave us this beautiful gift. Pastor Daniel Taiwo Odukoya. From the story we read in your word, Heavenly Father, when you heal 10 people, only one goes back to give a testimony. So we know the testimonies we had, the tributes we had tonight are only a fraction of the impact that his life made on many. So right now, Heavenly Father, we want to join the host of heaven. We're not sad. We're happy. We're excited. We are blessed that Pastor Taiwo came through us. Will you jam those hands together? Give Jesus a big, big hand clap. Let's give Jesus the praise and the thanks. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, well, this doesn't seem like how they're doing it in heaven. I think they're looking down and wondering what's going on down here. Give Jesus a big shout, please. <laughs> Let the angels know. Yes! So the question tonight, I mean, one of pastors, somebody came here to testify and said, I spoke to someone just a few hours ago. I was sitting here. I got the news. The person was gone. Who here can confidently say it can never be me? When will we not go? We just pray it will not be before time. When you look from God's perspective, they don't sorrow. in it. The way God sees death is different. That's why they call it sleep. When somebody's time is not right, God doesn't want them to go, they're not going. Pastor Nikkei's maternal grandfather, who eventually became a Lubado, he was sick and left his body. And he said that he saw Jesus and Jesus told him, my assignment for you is not finished. There's one more thing you are going to do before you come here. Go back. And he came back into his body and was healed in the hospital and became Olubado if you bad up after that. If your time is not right, nothing will happen. Somebody, a plane broke up from over 30,000 feet above sea level. One woman survived. So the way God says it is different, right? The question I want to ask you is, you, if it was your time now and you stepped into the other dimension, would they celebrate 
Will you bow your head with me a moment and let's pray. And I just want to say a quick prayer with that honest person who says, I can't be lying before God. My relationship with God is not okay. My relationship with God is not okay. Every human was born with the nature of sin. One day you get to know the truth and you make a choice. God sent his son Jesus Christ who died a shameful and a painful death on the cross just to pay for your sins and mine. And all God wants us to do is to accept it and to ask him for forgiveness. That's all. So if you're that honest person who says, Pastor Sam, pray with me that God should forgive me my sins and give me his nature. Take the nature of sin from me and give me his nature. If you're that honest person, can you please put your hand on your heart? And we're going to say a short prayer as we receive forgiveness from God and a new life from God. And God bless you for your honesty. You may be a part of the service online and you want us to say the prayer together. Can, please, can you please put your hand on your heart? If you're right here, Please remain standing with your hand on your heart as I ask everybody else to take their seats. Remain, if your hand is on your heart, can you please remain standing and let's pray together. Say this prayer after me. Dear God, I believe that you love me. I believe that this life is not all there is to my life. I believe that you sent Jesus, your son, to die for me. And right now, I ask you, Heavenly Father, to look at that price that Jesus paid and to forgive me my sins. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we're grateful that on this day that we celebrate the life of your son, Pastor Daniel Taiwo Dukoya. Because one day, decades ago, he did exactly this. He accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, received forgiveness of sins. On this day, we thank you because our brothers and our sisters have also taken the same step. And your word tells us that there is joy in heaven. There is celebration. You throw a party when it happens to just one person. Now we see there are many. So we just want to say thank you. So Lord, in Jesus' name, we ask Heavenly Father that you teach them to know you. Teach them to love you. Teach them to love other people the rest of their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please do have your seats. Can we join heaven again in giving Jesus a big hand clap and thanking him for all these wonderful people? So Fountain of Life Church, thank you very much. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Please put your hands together again for the Lord. Thank you so very much, sir. God bless you, sir, and increase you in Jesus' name. We're moving very quickly now into a time of prayer where our grandfather in the Lord is going to bless his grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We are going to call on the family, Pastor Taiwo's children and grandchildren to come forward and they are going to be prayed for by our grandfather in the Lord, Bishop Mike Okonko. Please let's all stand and in agreement with prayers for this. Let me express my gratitude to all the men of God that are here tonight. And every one of you that has made it out here, thank you so very much. And the multitude of people is the king's honor. 
we do appreciate your sacrifice, your commitment, and your dedication. May the Lord continue to honor you in Jesus' name. And uh, the summary of everything, like everyone has said, is that Pastor Taiwo is a good man. Very good man that never faked. He was never a scam. What you see is what you get. And so we are grateful to God for his life, for the legacy that he has left behind. I want us to pray. Stretch your hands to us here. Father, I lift up these children. Thank you, Father. A seed shall serve him, and it shall be counted unto him for a generation. We give you the praise for the deposit in these lives. Thank you, Father, that these ones will not be alone. Your hand will rest upon them mightily. Father, these ones will not fight the demons of their parents. And the dream of the wicked against them will never come true. Every womb of wickedness conceived against them will is aborted. Father, I speak that they will never be frustrated. They will never be disappointed. Your deposit in them shall find expression. Lord, the, the legacy that the, the parents have left behind will find greater expression. I speak the blessing of dominion. The blessing of possession, the blessing of increase, the blessing of abundance, the blessing of opportunity, the blessing of favor, the blessing of creativity, insights and concepts upon their lives. They will excel in every area of their lives. You have assured us that the seed of the righteous shall be mighty. They shall inherit the earth. And that they shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. We declare this over these ones. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your lives will not be cut short. Your lives will not be cut short. You will fulfill your dreams. You will fulfill your desires. You will fulfill your visions. In the name of Jesus. The blood that speaks better than the blood of Abel. We keep on speaking on your behalf. Creation will favor you. Doors of continents, nations, cities, towns and villages shall be open to you. And wherever you set your feet upon, you will possess it. I declare restoration over your lives. The wisdom of God, understanding, knowledge and skill, creativity and concepts we declare over your lives you will not have cause to weep you will not have cause to lament each time we hear of you it shall only be good news thank you father we return the glory the honor the adoration to you in jesus mighty name we pray Everyone shout a loud amen. amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. It's been a wonderful evening. Uh, for us today. Just a few announcements. Choir, just hold it. We have to close now. <laughs> just a few announcements um, before uh, we leave. Um, we have a tribute book uh, in honor of Pastor Taiwo. Um, we're going to share it with our guests. Our Fountain of Life Church members, just hold on. We'll get yours to you. 
but you can also get on the screen and all our social media handles. There's um, a link. Yes. You can scan that code and actually download the tribute book. It's 250 pages. 290 pages. So you can actually scan it um, and we would leave that on uh, after the service so you can scan it. Um, the service tomorrow morning is at 11 a.m. And we thank all those who are watching online. Uh, I know there are over 7,000 people watching at this time. The Lord bless you. And I know some of you gave your lives to Christ. Hallelujah. So the service tomorrow is at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Um, I'd like to call on Pastor John Odukoya for the vote of thanks. Let's make him welcome. Thank you. As we come to the close of this service of songs in honor of our pastor, our father, our leader, our general, our brother, Daniel Taiwo Odukoya. On behalf of the family, I wish to express a profound gratitude to your presence and support during this difficult time. It means the world to us. To see so many people gathered together here, united in grief, uh, remembrance and celebration of a life so beautifully lived. I want to thank, uh, I'm not going to mention names because it's always going to end in trouble, but I want to thank Bishop, the grandfather of Fountain of Life. We thank you, sir. <laughs> Bishop Michael Konko, Bishop Peace Okonko, thank you so much for coming. I thank the distinguished uh, ministers that came, that come, Pastor Sam Adeyemi and Pastor Nike, thank you. And Mrs. Oshibajo, we thank you. And there are a lot of uh, general overseers from different organizations are here just to celebrate a life well lived. We thank you so much. The choirs and musicians, we thank you for the heartwarming melodies and hymns that have lifted our spirits, brought tears to our eyes, and reminded us of the eternal hope we hold on to. Your talents have brought solace to our aching, aching hearts and made today's service truly memorable. There's no word to, to which wish to express our sincere gratitude. When he was born 67 years ago, we never knew the Lord would use him this mightily. But we are thankful to God for his grace and mercy. That is all that we receive, mercy from God. And we thank you for this show of love. And those, those that sent text messages, the ones that came to visit from different areas, the, those that are here that flew here, that drove here, and everything, we, we, we just, it's mercy that we have received. And we thank God for the life of Pastor Tawood. We thank the Lord for giving us such a wonderful, humble man. We are grateful. Eshe, I want to pray. No more will you cry for the glory of the Satan. You will never cry to the pleasure of the enemy, but you will shed the tears of joy continuously in the name of Jesus Christ. The one that was not there when you were created will not have power to determine how you will end in the name of Jesus Christ. The one that has called you, the world did not give it to you. The world cannot take it away. Stand firm. The church is marching on. The gate of hell cannot prevail. We are here to, do, to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. And I want to thank you all for coming. May the Lord guide you home safely. In Jesus' mighty name.
Eshe. Thank you, Pastor John. Um, uh, Pastor John has recognized um, uh, our grandfather. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Pastor Sam and Pastor Nike. God bless you. Uh, we also want to thank Her Excellency, uh, Pastor Dolapo Shimbajo. Thank you for coming. And all uh, um, there's Bishop Stephen Adibite um, representing the National Khan President. Thank you for coming. And all the men of God. And Fountain of Life Church, you are blessed. Hallelujah. Um, just before we share the benediction, we sing in church that Hallelujah, no go finish for our mouth. We're going to shout three wonderful Hallelujahs. Can we rise up on our feet before we share the benediction? Uh, Pastor Benga, please. <laughs> Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! What a glorious night. Can we give a wave offering to the Lord? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Shall we please share the grace together? And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And so sin shall not have dominion over us. For the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us and he quickens our mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Amen. God bless you all. See you all tomorrow, 11 o'clock, for the funeral service. Good night. <laughs>